So as you just heard, my name's Paul and I, I run the consulting department in Huawei. Uh, most people don't know that Huawei has a consulting department. Everybody thinks Huawei is a vendor of equipment, which is mostly true. But uh, more recently, the company has taken a slightly different, uh, different direction and is now trying to uh, blend different talent in the company and try and focus on an ecosystem of business and try and improve business uh, across, the, across the globe. And if we believe if we can do that, then the market is bigger, everybody will invest and all the vendors can share. So that's, um, that's what I do in Huawei and I've been doing it here for about eight years now in the company. So the presentation is called Connect the Un Unconnected. And I thought perhaps the best way to start is really to give a little, uh, little journey. So the slides over here show from left to right about alarms and you know, a better, a better home, shall we say, a smarter home. So let's take some simple things. If you've got a, a mobile phone, you've got an alarm system, and you've got a few things connected, where's the real money? I'm always interested, where's the money of these sorts of things? So whether an alarm wakes you up, and here we've got examples here, morning wake up, call, environment, the temperature, connect the, the home and all these things, sensors, etc. But let's take a vision slightly differently. Do you know that in Hong Kong two years ago, there was a mirror? You walk up to it, probably in the morning, when you're half naked, and when you stand there, you put your finger on the, on the bath, on the, uh, the, the sink, and it uh, you know, puts a, a needle in here, and it measures your, your blood. And whilst you're standing there, it measures your BMI, and it does a whole bunch of other things that are integrated. So when I heard about this and saw the product and saw a number of other things, I've been thinking, what's going to happen in the future? So imagine the alarm wakes you up. Well, the alarm doesn't wake you up. In fact, what happens is, the alarm only wakes you up if a certain number of conditions are met. So let's take some examples. You're about to wake up at 7 a.m. in order to catch the 8 a.m. train from Holborn Station to somewhere else. But it's raining and the tube is late, of course, but so too are two-thirds of all the delegates here, so the meeting's going to be postponed. So you don't need to wake up at, at, at 7 a.m. You could wake up at, at 7.30, for example. Or better still, because the sensors in your body, which have been implanted or put near you, measure your body, then they know you're coming down with the flu. There are no meetings in the morning. They can all be rescheduled. So everything is integrated. So all the biomedicine yourself, together with all the environment, so your own environment, together with the home environment and the environment outside, are all connected. So the vision of the future is everything is connected. So think about everything being connected. If it's all connected, where's the money? Because that's what it's all about. We're not here to try and invest in things or put gadgets in the home. Smart parking, I was in Moscow two years ago. My colleague and I, we pulled up the minister's premises. He said, wait, Paul, I need to park. So he grabbed his phone, he pressed you know, an app, park. And then he's looking around, I've got to just double check the, the address, where am I, which street am I in? And then he had to press another button to confirm how long he was going to park there. And I said, that's, that's not really an advanced system. An advanced system would be when everything's connected, the phone knows it's Paul, okay? It knows it's Paul. It knows Paul is sitting with the phone inside a car. The car is parked, the car is stopped. Paul is exiting with his phone with the, from the car. Near field, far field things. So what happens then? You go on, carry on, finish your meeting, come back in the car, you're back inside the car, car keeps moving. All you get is a bit to say, please confirm. Isn't that what integration of everything means? In the home, where's the money in the home? We did a survey, 44% of people in the UK said, I will pay money if you can save 10% energy in my home. That's where the money is, isn't it? How many cars in Greater London? Don't know. Let's call it a million, I like simple numbers. How much would it cost to connect all the cars in London? Anybody have an idea? If there are a million cars, about five million pounds. It's about five, five dollars, five pounds a sensor at the chip level. And you can expect over the next two years or so that the sensors will be this sort of commodity pricing. How much for a platform? Maybe a couple more million dollars. Let's call it 10 million pounds to connect the cars in London. Where's the money? If we're able to optimise, which we can, optimise the traffic, two things can happen. But the most important one, other than the traffic becoming better, is doesn't the government go to the WEF and say, UK commits to 1% better? greenhouse emissions. That's worth $10 million investment, a couple of hundred billion dollars worth of, uh, worth of benefit. This is where the business is. This is where the money is. This is where the opportunity is. 
Why is it all about NBIoT, which is one of the components that we've been talking here? Because it enables things. So just to capture, where's the money? There are lots of studies that show the different vertical markets and how much money there is. But collectively, everybody is saying around seven, seven plus trillion dollars, sorry, I know this is UK, but seven trillion dollars in the vertical markets. The three that stand out, if you're a betting person, where to invest, e-health. Of the seven and a half trillion dollars, 1.62 sits in e-health. Another 710 billion sits in waste management. Another 405 billion sits in energy. So these three are the highest. If you go to things like smart home, there's only 40 to 50 billion dollars there. But we all seem to be playing around in this noise. Parking meters, parking, where's the, where's the money? Who are we gonna sell the parking systems to? Surely the city of London would love, you know, they collect 100,000 pounds probably a month for, illegal, you know, for parking meters. So wouldn't one of the operators putting in an NBIOT solution go up and say, here's your 100,000 pounds, you don't need to employ people down here to go and collect all the, collect all the, um, collect all the money? And the second one is the policing to make sure that illegal cars are not being parked anywhere. All these things from being connected are actually very straightforward to do. And this is where the business opportunity is in these vertical markets. I think you've seen a similar slide to this that we uh, portrayed in Barcelona and also in the MBB forum last year, um, together with a number of our partners. And it's showing a little, a little triangle that shows at the bottom layer where we think the money is in the connection. And this is running a couple of billion connected devices. Um, and NBIOT, which is on the right-hand side, is showing the technology. And we've given some examples of the different technologies that are available across these and the different type of requirements. I'm not going to go into the detail. You're quite welcome to get the PowerPoint if you'd like it and, and study the numbers. I'm here more to excite you and give you some ideas on, on why we're doing these sorts of things. So different market segments on the left-hand side, very straightforward. It's all the connection. But once it's all connected, as I've said, it's very inexpensive to connect it. Where's the money? And the money only comes from improving life, improving government, and improving business. When we speak to operators, and including partners, where do we see the problems, or what's of interest to them? The first thing is security. First thing is security. Not just about privacy of data and hacking and other things, but it's all about the entire ecosystem, privacy. You already know, as soon as you turn on your phone, you do a search, the first thing Google asks you is, uh, can I know your location? And once you do, game over. Google now knows everything about you. It's very interesting. I don't use Facebook. And uh, my wife last week, we live in Malaysia, my wife last week, she said, it's very interesting, Paul. Facebook is asking, is recommending your driver to me. Now, I haven't used that driver in uh, three or four years. And I don't use Facebook. And the last time my wife, the driver, and I were together, so I think when, when he took us, you know, took the family to the, to the, uh, to the airport uh, many months ago. So I don't use Facebook. Rarely talk to my driver anymore. And Facebook is recommending to my wife that, you know, perhaps, you know, I have a relationship. There might be another thing, but we're not going to discuss that here. Yeah? <laughs> but, but quite clearly, it's very, so analytics. So the first one is security. Why MBIOT is so important? Why it's important to have standards? 3GPP hasn't been hacked. Okay, you can do other things to jam it, but um, the good news is it hasn't been hacked in, in the last 30 years. That's, that's, some, that's a reason why we want standardization. I distinctly remember all the operators standing in the forum in MBB last year saying, will all you vendors please get together and standardize it so we can have a standard? Because it will improve the ecosystem. Because without an ecosystem, these things that I talked to, talk to you about, about the vision of the future, can't work. People only pay for little gadgets here and there. It will not improve your lifestyle. It will not improve the government. It will not improve the country. The second one here is about ubiquity. So just now we heard uh, comments and I had the pleasure of talking to one, one operator outside who was saying, how do we do it you know, roaming? How do we get across areas? It's ubiquitous connection, ubiquitous coverage. You need the coverage in order to be able to, to offer services across all different type of vertical markets because people will be jumping from here to here to here, from the home to the cart to everywhere. Yeah? So this is an example, carrier grade network, that's what we believe, ubiquitous coverage. Innovation, service innovation, I've just given you some examples. It's very important, we believe in the IoT space, whether it's NB or other, but in the IoT, which includes the, the higher data, data rates and the, and the connectivity, 
that an ecosystem of partners is important. So the third thing customers and operators are asking Huawei is, who and how will you develop APIs? So security, devices, SDKs, APIs. These are the key considerations that people are interested in. But perhaps the most important one is, how does it know, example, Facebook, my wife, me, how do you know my body isn't feeling well, that I should be woken up, I shouldn't be woken up? How do we do remote diagnosis, et cetera? How do we do those sorts of things? Data analytics, you call it big data. We've been doing customer behavior analysis, which is the, the phrase that I've been using in industry for a number of years, for many years. What Huawei has developed now is a thing called MBA, machine behavior analysis. So what we're doing is we're studying, we're looking at the digital signatures of objects in their communication and things, and looking at the correlation between objects, between people, between objects and things, between objects and people. But the question is not about the analytic here, it's about the storage capacity. If you have 70 million people in, in the UK, and everybody has a, a SIM, it's actually have 70 million people, maybe 100 million connections, you're going to have a billion of them by 2025. 20, That's a lot of information that needs to be stored. Can you imagine the size of the data center? But the, more, the question really is, how much will it cost to store the data before you start doing the analytics? So these are the areas that we find in IoT that are important. It all starts with coverage, it all starts with standardization, and we think NB-IoT is, is the one to do it. I thought I'd give a couple of quick examples, very specific examples of, of what we've been looking at in an industry uh, for one particular vertical market in, a, in another country. And the first one is about um, water. So I'm not gonna talk about a smart water meter. No, that's, that's not really the, the cause here at all. But you know, where is the money in water? The money's in two areas. The first one, how much does it cost the water company to send out thousands of people to read the meters? Yep, that's a huge labor cost. The second one is water is their gold, isn't it? So if uh, you know, water starts at you know, a trillion liters up here, by the time it trickles out here, the sum of all this trickle is, is not what, we, what they're paying for here. There's a problem with leakage. So we see water as an ecosystem from the people who are measuring it, from monitoring it at different points from the dam or the reservoir, all the way through its network. And perhaps the last one, particularly important I think, uh, more recently, due to terror threats and other things, is water quality. Because you can also measure the water quality at different points, so you can look at different type of threats. This is the business of water, and this is what I think you know, operators, telecom operators, should be positioning themselves to take advantages in these type of segments. So this is just an example. We've done one analysis here which shows how much money you might make, how much saving you might make, um, and you know, the information's available to anybody who would like it. The second one is about um, you know, the whole parking system. You can see the parking system is not simplistic. It's not just about having a parking app, not just about replacing the meters, but there is a value proposition that's available just by understanding everything in the movement of vehicles and the people with respect to vehicles. So one business opportunity is vehicle to vehicle, the logistics, flow of traffic, improving those sorts of things. Um, you imagine it will, it will come, autonomous vehicles will be here. And for those of you who haven't played with one, it's very scary uh, when you take your hands off the wheel and let it do it for you, right? You don't trust it. One of the reasons we're moving down this area of connection of everything, and, and in particular where 5G will also help to enable a lot of the IoT, have you ever been confronted with a robot? You see this object moving towards you, and it's made of a lot of metal, and it's pretty heavy. And the first thing you do is step back. So it's invading your privacy. So you can imagine if you've got thousands of these objects moving around that are thinking independently, you need analysis. You need to understand the relationship. You need to have the right type of network. You need to have it secure, as somebody mentioned before about having networks uh, you know, go down. So these are examples with some numbers that we've put together for a particular parking solution. We've been trialing these parking solutions in pretty much every continent over the last uh, 12 months. We did a study in one Western Euro European country to get some ideas of where the money might be from the connection. Uh, so we're looking at different use cases by different segments. And this will give you some examples of uh, where they are. We also did uh, some maturity assessments uh, from an ecosystem perspective. Network, platform, security, analytics, all the ecosystem components 
for each of them to see which ones were mature and which ones were not mature. So we've been working on, on these, these little... So the picture I'm trying to point, paint for you is it's an ecosystem. You know, IoT involves everybody in this room, from the vendors and the consumers, the people thinking of different ideas, the apps developers, the data miners, etc. So standardization and things like this. We, we believe that uh, by June, it's a pretty good bet, that uh, the MBIOT will be standardized in the 3GPP. That's good news for everybody. Uh, I'm not going to address the LPWA and the others. I still think that in the near, near field, in the home, for example, where there isn't real standardization other than Wi-Fi, you know, Zigbee, Sigfox, et cetera, and, and Bluetooth, perhaps, that will probably come when there's a lot of pressure being put to bear in the home, probably around standardization based on personal security. But in June this year, we expect NBIOT to be standardized. That well means that uh, all the operators globally will be able to implement them. Uh, by having this type of standard, it means that all investment that operators have made already should be a small incremental investment to enable the entire network. So that means I'm expecting, we are expecting software updates. The whole network is IoT enabled and ready for business. Remember, if the platform has open APIs, that means the broader community can take advantage of that network. I've given a, 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 a list, uh, not a list, a, um, a sort of segmenting, again, the value chain of where we can see business opportunities. There is clearly business opportunities from the device and the chipsets, but also we think that there's a significantly more, um, more opportunities moving up the, the market. And we've given some examples here of some of the players in the IoT ecosystem from vendors and smart, you know, smart ecosystem, agile companies, as well as other, other operators. So in a nutshell, that's Huawei's perspective on IoT, narrowband IoT, vision of the future, why we think narrowband IoT from an operator's perspective is important to invest in and standardize in because we think that it will build a better connected world. Thank you very much.